I'm John Tig Tigan, ambassador for Lucid Optics, and you're watching Gear Report. Hey GearHeads, Jeff with Gear Report. We're here at the Lucid Optics Ballistic Summit 2019 at the MRA Whittington Center in Raton, New Mexico. Continuing a series of new product introduction kind of videos. We're not gonna to get too deep into the weeds, but we wanna give you a taste or a tease and a little bit of information about some new products. So you can see the new HDX video we already did. We'll have another one posted for the little mode. But this one is gonna be for the... This is the new Lucid Optics M7. It's a micro tube style red dot sight. So first off, thank you for Gear Report for having me on. I appreciate it. Absolutely. I didn't introduce you, I apologize. So let's... Uh, Remind people who, who you are. Sure, good. Jason Wilson here with Lucid Optic Guys. So we had, uh, geez, what was it, four, four and a half years ago or so, we reviewed the red dot that you had at the time. Yeah, four and a half years ago, we had the previous M7. Right. Which, and it was a different form factor. Yeah, it was similar type technology, but lots of upgrades have gone into this unit mm -hmm. from that. We actually took our old M7 off the market there for a while because mm -hmm. Uh, there were some companies that copied it directly and it caused some confusion in the marketplace. So as we developed the new one, we just took the old one off. So why don't you dive in with what are some of the changes, upgrades you mentioned, and uh, you know what sets it apart from other optics in the market? Sure. So we started out with a cast aluminum frame that could be strengthened in certain spots where we found were stress areas. So this one's a lot more durable than the one was previously. We also identified the, the need for a smaller unit. So this one's about 40% smaller than the previous unit. And this one has a larger objective lens than it does the ocular lens, which increases the field of view or the perceived field of view on a red dot. And we had some problematics with some of the electronics on a AAA battery. So we went to the industry standard of a 2032 coin cell. We increased the quality of the LEDs that's gonna be shaping the reticle with this unit. And the 11 brightness settings on this make it very usable for almost all light conditions. The turrets are not necessarily low profile, but they are not capped either. They are easily accessible to make an adjustment if you need to, but they're not gonna get bumped and moved during hard use. And we have a modular base on this unit so what you can do is we have a low, medium, and a high mount for the M7, and right now on it is the medium mount. It is a two-slot Picatinny rail mount for very secure mounting. And outside that, we have a new reticle in it that has some eye-driving geometry. We are taking advantage of all the lessons we've learned from a four-minute dot to a dot and donut, and we've added a little bit of eye-driving geometry with some siding wedges that drive right to the center, making this reticle and the larger field of view very fast, very accurate. And that's the kind of thing every manufacturer says about the reticle, is it's great and, and it'll make sure. you faster on target acquisition. And, you know, I'm skeptical always. So we were at the range, and I spent some time with this this morning, just transitioning from target to target to target to test that. Mm -hmm. And you know, even with my limited skill level, it worked really well for me. Yeah, we've so. done actually a lot of testing with this reticle. We have units in prototype stage that had just a four minute dot. Mm -hmm. We had units that had a two minute dot and a 25 minute circle. And then we have our new hybrid reticle in there in a separate unit. And we had law enforcement, military, and three gun competitors all shoot the, the same firearms on a clock, the same setup on the range. And what we found was this reticle proved out to be about 30% faster across the board against all the other geometries. The only thing we changed was the geometry of the reticle. Right. And, you know, I have an astigmatism, so I do get a little bit of starbursting, but it's not as bad as some others. I can still see, I, I think from a functional standpoint, I still got that kind of chevron at the bottom. Right. I could still pick it up enough that it kind of helped me get onto the target a little bit quicker. Whereas a dot, especially as the dots get a little bit bigger, it just turns into a big nebulous starburst. This actually worked better for me with the astigmatism. I, I, I thought looking at the diagram of it, oh, this is just gonna be a blurry mess for me. And it is a little bit of a blurry mess, but it's still very functional, which it, it surprised me. I didn't expect that. And one of the things when you're looking at a reticle, it might help you out, is back the brightness off. Mm -hmm. um, starbursting it, it amplifies, even with astigmatism, with more power. Yeah. Sometimes you don't need it to be set at the full brightest power. Right. 
Yeah, super bright out there this morning when we were shooting. So I, I had to keep it up fairly bright, but even on a super bright day, sure. I was able to pick it up. And, and that's not true of all of the red dots that I have used. Some of them, they, they just wash out on a nice summer day. And you know, I was still able to, to see well and use it. I'm anxious to see how these hold up. So far with the limited testing we've done, this is the first time we saw them was at this event. So we've had a couple days of using them on a couple different platforms. I think the other one was on a nine millimeter AR, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. Yeah, um, the and folks over at Palmetto State, State well. uh, they've been gracious to give us a couple of their test beds for their new uh, PCC carbines. Mm. And that's what we've been running them on. Seem to work pretty well. I'm excited to see how the market receives this. Looks like a nice kind of evolution of the idea you started with and, and doing some things to improve it. I'm a sucker for your automatic brightness control, which is not on this one. <laughs> it's not on this one. But you know, uh, there, there are others uh, in, in your product line that have that. So a anything else you, you want to point out about this one? No, really. Just you talk about testing and seeing how it flushes out in durability. Um, we've put 25,000 rounds through rifles with this optic on it, nice. run it hard in um, competition settings. Um, some of our pro shooters are running them now. They uh, proving out to have a battery life of around 1,500 hours. Mm -hmm. So on a 2032, it's pretty efficient. Um, we're pretty confident that it's going to be that an economical choice for the guys getting into some of the three gun and PCC matches. All right. Thanks for that. Appreciate it as always. Uh, where can folks get this if they want one? Um, you can find them at uh, lucidoptics.com or uh, through your favorite uh, dealer distributor. They're available through your distribution. They can get them. Awesome. That's it for now. We'll see you at the range. Thank you.